There are men and women, driven by passion, committed to find happiness and meaning. They strive to better our lives and make us aspire to help others. They are visionaries. They advocate events, ideas, technological innovations that make significant shifts in our thinking. To make a better future for us, they pursue game-changing inventions that make us change the way we think, we live, we carry our lives, the way we see things. We ask ordinary people about their ideas and what they believe are game-changers. Journey with us as we tell stories of these visionaries and their game-changers. A great idea can get you ahead of the game, but a visionary concept can be a game changer. Hello, I'm Albi Benitez, and this is Game Changer. In this episode of Game Changer, how to find your ways along the traffic-clogged streets of Metro Manila. How other amazing apps like the Uber and Grab Taxi are solving commuting problems. You've probably heard about this traffic application called Waze. I have it here in my cell phone, but I haven't tried it. It works in other countries, but can it handle the toughest test of all, Metro Manila traffic? Let's see what the fuss is all about. We are a social media nation, so how about a social media traffic app? Instead of posting photos of food and mundane details of our day, we post what we see on the road and help motorists plan their trips efficiently. This is called crowdsourcing. It is the heart of Waze, the world's largest community-based traffic and navigation app. With over 80 million users in the world, there are reportedly 330,000 Filipino Waze users, or Wazers. So Filipinos can, as the Waze motto goes, outsmart traffic together. It also shows how long it will take to get to the destination. Here it says to Quiapo Church, it will take us about 28 minutes and we'll be traveling 8.3 kilometers. And it tells you exactly what time we will get there. The app is simple. You tell it where you are and where you want to go. It gives you the distance and the estimated time it will take to reach your destination. With the help of fellow drivers on the road, the app suggests different ways so you don't get stuck in traffic. You are also warned of what's up ahead and what's lurking around the corner, be it an accident or a road crew doing repair work. Look at that. There is a vehicle stop on the road ahead in 760 meters. So a Wazer has uh, uploaded the information that 650 meters from where we are, there's a vehicle that stopped. Now it also has a, an application to verify whether the data is correct or not. Not there, meaning there was no vehicle on the road. Or maybe the vehicle has been moved or it moved so you can update that information and say that there is no more vehicle on the road. According to the Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA, our economy loses 2.4 billion pesos daily because of traffic. If we don't do something about it, by 2030, it will become 6 billion pesos per day. Waze helps Wazers bring down this productivity loss. It has a feature called Time in Traffic. Again, using data from fellow Wazers on the road, the app can tell you how long you're going to be stuck in traffic. There may be traffic everywhere, but Waze gives you the chance to pick a lesser evil. Hazard reported ahead. To address the risk issue of drivers using their phones on the wheel, Waze included the option to input information on the app using hands-free voice control. Heavy traffic reported ahead. Through Waze, you will see a community that genuinely wants to help each other. 
Users don't profit from waste, and they don't get anything by being the most active waster on the road. We are quick to adapt to new technology and keen on using it when it is patok or effective. The latest Uso apps are for car services, Uber and Grab Taxi or Grab Car. Simply put, there are apps that will let you book cars through your phone and have the driver fetch you and take you to your destination like it's your own car. No more hailing a cab under the heat of the sun or in the middle of a heavy downpour. Mario Susog is one of Uber's drivers here in the Philippines. Kasi nung nagtataksi ako, ang kinikita ko po sa isang buwan, palagay ko nasa 16 hanggang 18,000 lang po. Pero nung nag-over po ako, lalo na po mayroong incentives, kumikita na po ako ng 60 hanggang 70,000 sa isang buwan po. They earn that much because Uber charges slightly more than a regular cab. Basic Uber Car or Uber X has a 40 pesos flag down rate and charges 5 pesos and 70 centavos per kilometer. A regular taxi has the slash 30 pesos flag down and charges 2 pesos and 50 centavos per kilometer. And then you have the Uber Black, the more high-end cars like the Montero Sport that Mario has, which charges 90 pesos on flag down and charges 12 pesos and 92 centavos per kilometer. And its most unique feature? You can only pay via credit card. Uber also pays for your toll fee, so the transaction is entirely cashless for the passenger. All these to ensure the safety of both drivers and passengers. The app tells you your driver's details, and in turn, tells the driver your details. You can also share your journey with your friends online, so they would know who your driver is in case something happens. Hindi po kami nagmamadali sa kalsada dahil malaki naman po ang ang ano namin ang income. Tsaka bawal po kasi magkaskasero sa over. Dahil nirerate kami ng pasahero, nirerate din po namin yung pasahero. Pagka masama ang driver, maaari po kami tanggalin ni over. Last year in London, regular taxis staged a large protest against Uber. They argue that public transport in the United Kingdom is a hard badge to earn. Public drivers are trained rigorously compared to private individuals who can just turn themselves into public drivers through Uber and then get all the passengers. It is different in the Philippines because the commuting public feels we are better off driven by these private individuals. After all, our transport system is rife with horror stories of choosy and greedy cab drivers. That's why it cost a steer when the LTFRB wanted to regulate it through something called the TNC, or Transport Network Companies. We are the first country in the world to regulate Uber and similar car service apps. This week, after much suspense, especially in social media, Uber finally got itself the TNC accreditation from the LTFRB. They will be asked to comply with other regulatory um, requirements by the government, particularly the tax requirement. Uh, as we all know, we all pay taxes, so Uber and Grab car operator drivers should not be an exception. In case of trouble, in case of uh, problems that their operations might encounter later on, there is a mechanism by which the government can hold people liable in case of unsafe practices. We've changed their lives. We've not only doubled or tripled their income, but we've, they've, we've all, they've just been so better with it because they no longer see themselves as just drivers. They see themselves as grab drivers and entrepreneurs. Most of my passengers, all of them said, after having uh, ridden the grab car, hindi hindi na daw sila magtataxi ever. So who or what is a game changer? Game changers are things. Ideas, 
or they are people who put forth pioneering concepts that change the way things are made, the way we do things, or even the way we think. We'll discover the most enterprising people, seek and encourage potential trailblazers, and take a peek into the minds of game changers. Midas Hotel and Casino, a contemporary, design-led lifestyle hotel in the majestic hub of Manila with fabulous views of sunset on the bay. Midas offers designer amenities and guest rooms and suites, supreme restaurant options for sumptuous enjoyment, event studios for corporate meetings and vows, and a casino with world-class gaming. Here at Midas, we make days into moments. Sparkling creativity, it's stylemanship by Midas.